Hello and welcome to the HumeScope podcast from Enroll. Uh, for those of you who don't know what it's HumeScope, it's a recruitment training business um, co-founded by myself, Ed Khan, and Laura Oates. And each week we're going to be giving you 10-minute snippets into our world of recruitment, tips and tricks to help you on your journey as an agency recruiter, and hopefully some laughs along the way too. We hope you guys enjoy. Hello, everyone. Very solemn. Hello. You know what? It's funny because we're recording some episodes and the last few episodes that we recorded when I was pregnant, like, I just, you can see, like, I was just ebbing away. (laughs) I watched one of them. fading away. I could barely breathe. Like, (laughs) do you remember I got that weird lisp? Yes, you did. And then you got, I mentioned it to you and you got so weird about it. And then I instantly regretted it because you took it so personally and got really upset by it. And and listen to this, right? How bad is this? So Nick, my partner, was like, oh, I saw that, because he, like, he does these random stints on LinkedIn, right, where he just goes and likes every, like, it's like Nick, like, anyway, he was like, oh, I saw, like, your podcast episode. Um, he was like, was that like recent? And I was like, no, it was when I was pregnant. And he goes, oh yeah, I thought so because you looked a bit. And then I was like, don't, don't finish, finish that, Nick. Don't, I don't even want to know. I, I know where you were going with it. <laughs> and that's the end of that conversation. God, he's a brave man for even attempting <laughs> to say something like that. If he doesn't know me well enough. Like, where does he think that's going to go? Anyway. He would be thinking he's being funny. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, no, if you're watching, Nick, face, hey. <laughs> the look on his face made him realise he'd made a major error. <laughs> okay, this okay. week. What are we talking about this week? Overwhelm. In any aspect of recruitment or your life. Because now we're a life podcast. <laughs> and <laughs> I think that you are probably the best person to speak to this because I get overwhelmed a lot. Mm. And you we all get overwhelmed right yeah. you do get overwhelmed but yeah. I feel like you I don't know anyone that deals with overwhelm better than you do Ooh. not to put too much pressure on you but Ooh. you know like when we me and Ez caught up in person a couple of weeks ago and Ez turned up and I just had had a real morning of it and I was really struggling and was completely overwhelmed and just your I think your attitude to life and to work uh, often curbs overwhelm for you yeah I think so I think it comes from and I was thinking about this not long ago every I've assessed because I do a fair bit of self work and just thinking back on well actually I ask anyone listening to this to sit down out at the end of this episode and just think back to some of the worst moments in your life. Like I'm talking really horrible moments where you go, this is literally the worst thing that's ever happened to me or is about to happen to me. More often than not, those situations will have led you somewhere that has been incredibly nourishing, positive for you as a person. And Again, thinking back to all the times that we sit there and going, oh, my God, what if this doesn't happen? What if that client pulls that role? What if, what if, what if, what if? 90% of the time, we are thinking worst case scenario. Our brains are geared towards worst case scenario because we need to assess risk as humans. And back when we were Neanderthals, we had to assess that type of risk as a yes, no, we need to run, fight or flight. We don't have to do that anymore. And so our brains are constantly assessing risk and it's giving us the worst case scenario to keep us alive. But I'm like, we're in a professional setting, literally in recruitment, there is no life or death. People put so much pressure on, oh, what if the candidate doesn't show up? Well, tell you what, if the candidate doesn't show up, you pick up the phone to the client and go, I can't believe the candidate has completely ghosted me. It's got nothing to do with you. Often we just go, oh, the client's going to think this about me or the candidate's going to think this about me. My boss is going to think this about me. And it's often the worst case scenario. And you turn yourself into a fucking spiral. Mm -hmm. But it's never as as bad as you think it is. 
and it is not life or death. We're li- we're not saving lives. People take this job way too seriously sometimes in terms of the pressure they put on themselves. And I do, definitely. it does them no good. It actually decreases their performance because your brain is geared towards then the negative. Give your brain a negative thought, it will start adding more negative thoughts. Give your brain a positive thought, it will give you more positive thoughts. And that's why gratitude practices work really well because it gears your brain into positive thinking. And I think that is something that you are like religious about like your morning gratitude because it does it it puts your brain into positive thinking and I think then what happens is that we start to operate in a place of from a place of abundance rather than scarcity Mm. and it's impossible to achieve anything you really want to achieve from a a mindset of scarcity because all Mm. you're thinking is the not enoughness yeah And when we know that we're in fight or flight from like a a chemical perspective, the body starts to shut down any of the processes or organs that don't contribute to fixing the immediate danger. So what then happens is that we lose our objectivity. We lose our ability to to reason and it makes everything that much harder because we're we're trying to apply processes that aren't actually available Mm. to us and this is what causes then the overwhelm so I think having practices in place that are um like in your morning definitely Mm. but I also think having um something I've been working on is having like one minute circuit breakers Mm. like okay I've noticed that I'm feeling overwhelmed I need to do something to ground myself immediately. So is it just to sit, close my eyes for a second and take five deep breaths? Mm. Is it to whip your shoes off and put your feet on the ground? Is it to just take the hot drink in your hand and just notice how it feels in your hand or or take a sip of it? Is it to eat something mindfully? I think anything that you can do just to circuit break in that moment, because the overwhelm is the, and then what if this happens? Then what if this happens? Oh my God, I'm spiraling. And it's like, Mm. what, what can you what would be a great circuit break for you? And it's it's different for everyone, right? But it's like that kind of unhooking from the thought line, yeah. just going, okay, I need to do something physical immediately. Like, 100%. honestly, it might be like 10 push-ups, but yeah. it's just a circuit breaker. Yeah, it's to focus on something that's not the thing that you've been worrying about. It's just yeah. to put all of your energy into something that's outside of the worry. Yeah. I think the four overarching and we always say this to our course attendees that mindset is one of the most critical things in recruitment and for the success of your career and genuinely if you're sitting here going oh I don't have a morning practice it sounds a bit woo-woo I cannot recommend it enough and -hmm. some self-development which I would personally recommend and has changed my life is books on positive thinking Mm -hmm. and attraction and what you're thinking about that will become your reality that has been the biggest game changer for me and just a quick morning routine it doesn't need to be 60 minutes before you wake up you're doing sitting down doing yoga my morning routine now I used to write in my you know this or I used to write in my gratitude journal I don't anymore because it actually I've somewhat outgrown that so Mm -hmm. I've got a playlist called dance like nobody's watching if anyone wants a link to it happy to send it through but it's like my happy dance songs and I put it on in the shower it's got like four songs in it it's it's just like really happy songs for me so I put it on in the shower and I literally count on my fingers 10 things I'm grateful for and I'm dancing I'm counting off 10 things that's it I'm not doing anything extra than what most people are doing in their morning routine but that for me I'm out of the shower I'm like I'm in such a nice headspace I love that. I'm going to start doing that. It's so good. I bought myself a little speaker for the shower as well. It's so bloody good. good. And you do need to mix things up because otherwise thing, you know, like your morning routine and stuff, if if it becomes too routine, it again becomes a, I have to rather than I get to. Yeah. And that's something else that, um, for those of you who Sinead won't mind me mentioning Sinead Connolly who is my bestie in the world who runs Lotus People like that's something that we talk about a lot and that she that's does helpful huh? that's helpful I thought I was your bestie oh shut up <laughs> female bestie there you go <laughs> um something that she does to switch herself out of overwhelm is like I I get to do this rather than yeah. I should 
it's like I I everything is a choice I choose yeah. to do this. so when you're having a day where you're like oh my god I've got this in I've got this in I've got this in I've got this in it's like no I choose to have these things yeah. in anything that I no longer choose to have in I will move it mm. so I think as well switching the mindset from like oh my god I've got all of these things on how am I going to do them all it's like no I I get to do these things mm. like it's, it's, it's such- a slight different yeah but it starts to, again, move you into that place of abundance rather than scarcity. It's not like, oh, my God, all of this stuff is stealing my time. It's like, no, I get to fill my time with this stuff. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> I had to get it out as quick as I could. I hope people are watching rather than just listening because they are missing the mood. <laughs> I'm going to encourage them to jump on YouTube to watch this. What's my dead dance, dance moves? <laughs> Okay, see you guys next week. Bye.